Welcome back to Heroes Chronicles, Chapter 1, Warlords of the Wastelands. This is Serp, and this is Week 2. Word of your victories is spreading like wildfire, and as your scouts return from every corner of your homeland, you learn that the other clan clans remain quiet and neutral. They neither support you nor speak against you, except for one. The current lord of the clans, Rabak, was appointed by the wizards as a spokesman for your people. But you've never heard Rabak say a bad word about Brakadun. He sits in his stronghold, eating a feast each night, while you recall many nights when your family went hungry because you had to clear out your stores to pay the taxes. Rabak won't sit idle while you anger the wizards. You're certain the two of you will soon meet, and not as friends. Alright, so that's, uh... Astrologers procl proclaim a week of the condor. All dwellings increase population. Each week is declared a week of something in particular, and if it's the first week of the month, it's declared the month of that something in particular. Um, occasionally, it will be a creature which is actually represented in the game, um, controlled by one of the factions, and in that case, the, uh, the unit production for that creature will increase. And you'll also see uh, stacks of it kind of be generated around the map, I think. At least that was the case in Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In this case, it's just a condor. Uh, I think that may actually be pronounced condor, which is a type of bird and is not represented in this series. There's also the Week of the Plague, which reduces all populations by half, does not generate any new creatures, and is pretty terrible for everybody. Okay. Get us some basic archery, have us a fight with these pikemen over here. Pikemen are a level 1 unit as well. So they're not very strong, not very impressive. 1 to 3, 10 health, 4 attack, 5 defense. They stand up better than our goblins do, but they're also more expensive. Oh, we got rocks, the rocks, I'll, I'll have uh, all my critters wait. And these are Halbagers, who are slightly more powerful. They have a higher minimum damage, and their attack and defense scores are higher. They can also move faster, as you can see on account of them moving first. Uh, can't get a good shot on either one of them yet. Go there. I can shoot while the broken arrow symbol is present, it just means that I'll only do half damage instead of full damage. So it's often worth it to reposition instead. As always, the ogres have nothing- well, not as always, but as so far, the ogres really have nothing to fear here. So I need not worry about putting them forward. These guys, on the other hand, I don't really want to take any losses if I can avoid it, so I won't. Because I can. Now, if I had Bless, or Battle Rage, or whatever that is, um then I could enchant some of my units to do extra damage, but I don't have them. That also used up their... what's it called? Retaliation. So they will not be able to effectively retaliate against my ogres when the ogres lost a wolf rider. Only one. Not a big deal. Or the rocks could just finish them off, that works too. A huge army of goblins is a kind of a terrifying sight. It's certainly powerful. There is power in numbers, as well as power in individual strong units. The Ogre Magi can stay there. They're too powerful for me to take on just yet. Unfortunately, I have now gone far enough out of my way that getting back there will be difficult. Actually, actually, no way. That, that, that might be a good thing. Because it's a new week. All these have replenished. If I can get there, and back, and give him all the units that are now sitting in my castle, um, then he'll have a lot more units to take with him. That's always a good thing. Like I said, Ogre Magi are very powerful. I could skip ahead of upgrading anything else and just upgrade the Ogres. And I think I will. The difference in cost is substantial. They cost 100 gold piece more, each one to recruit. You can also upgrade basic units into the improved units by paying the difference in cost. 
Attack and defense skills are the same. Damage is the same. Health is 20 points more. Speed is only improved by one. But they cast Bloodlust. And you can tell them to cast Bloodlust. They do it whenever you want. It's very powerful. It's very useful. Uh, right, and I just built that, so there we go. That's the end of my turn. Gundula first, come over here. You can also... Whoop, not yet. I don't have a whole lot of gold, so this will be the time... Yeah, I can't even... I can't even build that. Oh, but that's not because I don't have enough gold, that's because I don't have enough wood. Yeah. Your total available wood. I didn't realize you could do that. Huh. Okay. So, it's... Time for me to start building up my economy. There are basically two things that you really want to work on. You can upgrade a city's or a fortress's military strength by um, improving the amount of soldiers it can give you and the power of those soldiers. Or you can upgrade its economy and get more money from it. Both of these are important because obviously you need them in balance with each other in order to be most effective. You can't make use of the troops if you don't have enough money to hire them. And sitting on, uh, sitting on your laurels on a pile of gold isn't going to help you if your opponents rush in and you don't have enough of an army to defend yourself against them. Or, you know, to take their stuff. There are also other buildings, which I suppose could be considered miscellaneous to that, that provide other useful things, like the blacksmith, which will provide your armies with one type of siege weapon thing. In this case, you can also build the ballista yard and get access to two, because that's something that the barbarians have that not all of the other factions have. There are many other items that are unique to the faction, such as the Freelancer's Guild, which can allow you to get gold back for for creatures if you want to bring them here and basically sell them off. The Marketplace can allow you, tra uh, allow you to trade resources. For instance, uh, if I built one, I might be able to acquire some wood by trading in some of my surplus of crystal, for instance, and I really don't need that. Uh, if I had access to these, I would want them because those require crystal, but since they're grayed out in this town, I cannot build them here. I imagine that's something that's going to be kind of a tutorial thing. They're going to grant me access to that in later levels. The Hall of Valhalla increases the attack skill of any visiting hero by plus one if I build it. The Mages Guild, of course, have more spells in them. So, that will increase the repertoire of any mage that I have studied there anyone with a spellbook. They don't really have to be a mage. And the higher level mages guild, 3, 4, and 5, are not always available. It depends on the, I suppose you could call it the magicalness or the magicality, <laughs> uh, the arcane leanings of the faction. The barbarians are not very magical, so they don't get access to the mage guild level 5. Or if they do, it's only in very specialized situations. I think their mage guild usually caps out at level 3 or level 4. However, if you have a character which has a sufficient wisdom skill to learn higher level skills, 3, 4, and 5, and you stop at a town which has a sufficiently high level mage guild, they will learn the spells that are... that are... entombed there? No. <laughs> that are contained there. And then you can make use of those in the future in your travels. Unfortunately, because our finances are so low... <laughs> that's what's unfortunate. I can only recruit one rock, for instance. Oh well. In that... what? Ac actually, take it with you, Serp. This is important. Even if I can only get one, that's certainly better than nothing. And having the ogre mages there is much better as well. His movement will be, uh, will be taken away as soon as he gets in the boat anyway, so... Move him a bit closer. Here, have some Ogre Magi. Have a rock. <laughs> I love how that sounds. I love how that sounds like I'm just handing him a, like, a stone rock. It's like, here, have a rock. Take it with you. It'll help. Get in the boat. 
end the turn. And because I depleted my resources so much, I don't have a lot of gold to spend building things. So I'm really restricted to building things that don't cost much. Even this costs 5,000. So I can spend my time building up things that don't cost very much and continue to improve my city, or I could save it in order to spend it recruiting troops later on or save up for the city hall and get more money in the long run. However, while you're exploring the map and there are still resources to be found, you can pretty much count on finding gold elsewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and invest in my, my city over here. My fortress. Go get some gems. And the ogre magi are still there and still menacing. And that's pretty much all I can do here anyway. Yeah, way to clear out that stuff so that Gundula can grab the gem pond that I totally could have grabbed, but hang on. Turn on. Where are you at? That's Gundula. Turn on where are you at? Um. Oh, right, you're in the boat. That was silly of me. I forgot that I'd put him in the boat, so I thought that I still had to do that. Now, this game is tricksy, and it'll have a whole bunch of places where there's only one square you can move through, and going through that square triggers a special event. Here's some gold right here. For the time being, though, I'm going to pick up all these goodies that are floating around in the water because they're useful. <laughs> and they'll build up my economy, like that would. That'll allow me to uh, upgrade the goblin barracks, for instance. What do you know of our history? You ask the older warrior sitting across from you at dinner. You've been asking your elders what they know of barbarian history, hoping that someone could tell you more about the past glories of your people. But you've found their knowledge lacking. Most haven't even heard the name of Yark. The warrior looks up from his meal, shrugs. As much as anyone. My grandfather said we used to be a great nation, the greatest, but he didn't have all his wits. Maybe it's true, but no more. Everything falls, I guess. Even a great oak, a thousand years old, will fall one day. You're impressed with the man's honest response, but annoyed that this veteran couldn't tell you more. How do you know who you are if you don't know where you came from? Is that why the wizards outlawed the bards? You extend your hand and ask, What's your name? Hardak, answers the warrior. Okay, so now we've met Hardax, and yes, I realize I'm kind of making fun of his name. And he will be our advisor throughout the rest of the campaign, at least for the first part of it. Um, I, if I recall, if I, if I refer to him as Hardax, forgive me, that's just me being silly. You've pulled a shipwreck survivor from certain death in an unforgiving ocean. Grateful, he rewards you for your act of kindness by giving you the boots of speed. All the, uh, all the items that you can pick up... Oh yeah, I can go down there too. However... Oh, okay. I have to go down there because I can't land here. Could land there. Oh. <laughs> and this is one of those situations I was talking about. You were enjoying the sea wind in your hair until most of the sailors strip off their sashes and draw their weapons. Rebuck has placed a hefty sum on your head, says their leader, a sum we plan to collect. And these are rogues. They are slightly more powerful than pikemen. So they're kind of in between a uh, level or tier 1 and tier 2 critter. Fighting 36 of them? That's a challenge. But I'll be I'll be all right. After all, I have an impressive army with powerful creatures. They're also quite fast. Oh, okay, that's the goblins. Okay. You bloodlust the rocks. Now this is what's great, is that I can now Ooh! I believe that's what just increased my attack skill that much. That's what Bloodlust does, friends. It's quite powerful. It's a large effect. And each stack of Ogre Magi can do that once per turn, so it may actually be worth my while to divide the Ogre Magi into two stacks. For the future. In the meantime... 
this rock, these rocks rather, will begin slaughtering rogues left and right. I don't know exactly what, um, how many left? One. I don't know exactly what the calculation is that determines exactly what effect attack and defense skills have on the damage dealt, but they do have a substantial effect, especially when the numbers are significant. Alright, now I can continue this way, get that flotsam over there, and I think I will. Now there's also a sea chest, but I don't have time for it right now. Gundula, we've already visited the windmill. Kindly say so. Also, if you press space where you are, you will, for one thing, center the map. And if you're standing on a on an item that you can interact with, like a town, or a windmill, or a, a dancing leprechaun, they exist, then, <laughs> then you will interact with whatever it is, again, instead of having to wait. Okay, I could build any of these things. Uh, or the Goblin Barracks. And I'm going to build the Goblin Barracks. Partly because that enables me to upgrade this one goblin here. Which makes him faster. And a hero can only move as quickly as the slowest troops that they have in their army. Because slow troops will slow you down. It makes sense. I could also recruit more of them. I could recruit all of them, in fact. But I'm not going to because I want to save my gold. So Gundula can just rest there for now. Yes. Sitting alone last night, you pondered the tragic loss of your people's history. You haven't been able to find a single person who knows the tale of Yarg and his horde. Some, pretending to be wise, made up some ridiculous story instead of admitting ignorance. Then a solution comes to mind. You tell your people to pass the word that you are looking for bards. Any who are brave enough to step from hiding will be under your protection. If your people are ever going to reclaim their courage, they need to rediscover their identity. And only the bards hold those secrets. It's it's a very social and it's a very uh yeah, it's a very social story. It's a very interesting history there. You heard this remote island was a retreat for wizards who came to visit the barbarian lands. You realize it must be true when a pack of gargoyles swoop out of the sky to attack. You may have noticed there were only two places on this island where I could land and they were both right next to the gargoyles to queue up this event. This is the way that the game handles scripting. It's fairly natural. It makes it fairly natural. Gargoyles are a tier 2 enemy. They fly. They're quite fast. They do meh damage. And how fast, how far can you go? I'll move up then. Yeah, and they zip across the screen like they're ridiculous. It's amazing. Oh, sweet. Sometimes, a bold move pays off. The goblin isn't even dead. Didn't kill a single one. Okay, since they're already up there, I will cast Bloodlust on the goblins. We're gonna get more action somehow. Uh, weaken those units. Step up ogres. Although there's a chasm there, and they're probably gonna make them see the battle. Fly up the rocks. The rocks there. Good. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Those rocks are super powerful. Okay. Yay! Had a battle with no losses! It's always a good thing. Basic Armorer reduces all damage inflicted against the hero's troops by 5%. I want that too. And because I stepped out of the boat, you're tired. Let's upgrade the city. I still don't... Oh, I'm 60 gold away from having enough for that. <sighs> well, if I build the marketplace this turn, that only costs 500, so I'm increasing my city, improving my city, and I should have enough for it in the next turn. Also, now Gundula, her, her movement bar should be a little bit higher. I'm not sure whether anyone was really paying attention to that. But I still don't have anywhere I really need her to go, so I'll just have her sit there. 
some wood, pick up some crystal, pick up the artifact. Visiting a local wise man, you explain the intent of your journey to find the bards. He reaches into a sack and withdraws a strange ring, which he hands to you. The Ring of the Wayfarer. There we get some more wood, some more gold, gold. The reason I'm not taking the experience out of those chests, which you can get by uh, distributing the gold among the peasants, which apparently gives you experience, I guess goodwill counts for experience, is that there is a level cap on each of these scenarios, with the exception of the one at the end of a scenario tree. And if experience is capped, it's generally quite likely that you'll reach that cap just through gaining experience in battles. And thus, getting gold, which you always kind of need, unless you're already winning anyway, is usually my higher priority. In single scenario maps, the multiplayer especially of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the default rather than Heroes Chronicles, it can be much more advantageous to take the experience and make your heroes stronger. But in campaigns like this with level caps, frankly it doesn't matter. You've found several of the best astrologers of the land gathered at a star axis. Happy to have some company, they teach you how to use the sun, moon, and stars to enhance your spellcasting ability. These, the star axis, the garden of revelation, uh, the Merletto Tower, and a mercenary camp, I believe, are structures which, for free, will raise one of your stats for each hero that stops on them, much like the learning stone up here gives them their next level of experience. Get some more gold, get some more gold. The Garden of Revelation increases knowledge rather than power. And then I'll have to spend my next little while just coming back here, getting back on the boat. And from there, the only place to land, because they've put all these reefs in the way, is right there, where we'll have our next story encounter. I have to build the blacksmith first, I wasn't paying attention to that. We have enough money to build the city hall, but we don't have a blacksmith and thus cannot adequately provide a city. Uh, the resource si silo is also very helpful, it uh, keeps up your stockpile of wood and ore, so I might not have uh, fallen into that trap where I couldn't build the barracks if I had built that earlier. It's another economy building. I believe each faction has a resource silo, but they stockpile different things. Uh, some of them have one that isn't called a resource silo, like a crystal spring, which produces crystal. Uh, I could be entirely wrong about that, but basically, yeah, they give you resources. Your name is on everyone's lips these days. Some say you're a troublemaker that's going to bring down the wrath of Brakadoon. Others wait to see if you have the strength to back up your words of conquest. You've heard that many secretly cheer you on, but there is one obstacle in your way. Rabak, the lord of the clans. And now we can finally build a city hall. All of our creature producers are out, now that we have enough money and enough of everything else. There is very little limit on what we can build, aside from that hard-coded into the scenario. I could also build the capital here, but that costs shit tons of gold. So now that I will definitely have 2,000, at least 2,000 gold next turn, on account of the city hall... There we go. I can afford to spend all my money on things like hiring the rest of the goblins. And perhaps the rest of the rocks, which I think I'll make my next priority. Because I love rocks, rocks are beautiful and wonderful and fast and actually the same speed as the hobgoblins. And this is several rocks. If I actually build up an army here, I could send Gundola to take care of them instead of, uh, instead of bringing back Tarnum. Although I'll have to bring him back eventually anyway. Zubin the Battle Mage has a few wolf riders. It doesn't look like much of a threat. Oh, and also it's day seven. So since apparently I've decided that for now at least I'm going to end these videos on day seven, I'll see you next time.